Good evening. Welcome to historic St. Anthony Cathedral Basilica. Our celebrant and homilist tonight is Bishop David Toops. Our con celebrants are Bishop Emeritus Curtis Guillory, Vicar General Monsignor Michael Jamail, and other priests of the diocese. Our mass this evening is being offered for the intentions of all those who have supported our diocesan ministries and Catholic charities of Southeast Texas with their prayers, good works, and gifts. On behalf of our bishop, our ministries, and my diocesan co-chairs and parish chairs, I thank all of those who have given of their time, treasure, and talent. This past spring, our faithful made a written commitment on prayer intention cards to pray for our ministries and the 110,000 individuals they serve. At the same time, they requested that Bishop pray for their special intentions. They asked for prayers for family and spiritual healing, for health issues, for their children and grandchildren, for the return of a loved one to the faith, for financial and employment concerns and many more challenges. Our children drew and colored our pew art, illustrating their prayers for the thousands of people our local church helps each year. Our Mass is being offered tonight for their unspoken intentions. We are also praying tonight for an end to racial injustice and to bring about peace to our country. These intentions have been prayed for by diocesan staff in the Pastoral Center Chapel where they have been kept. Tonight, we come together as community to pray for these needs. Our pledges and intentions are now carried forward in small individual baskets by our parish bishop's faith appeal leadership. They are being led by representatives of our various ministries that are supported by your prayers and financial gifts. The pledges and intentions are being presented to our parish chair, Torrevio Gonzalez of St. Joseph Port Arthur, and honorary chair, Joe Herrick of St. Anne Pomont Parish. They will be placed in one large basket representing our unity as the local church of Southeast Texas. Following Mass, the large intention basket will be taken to Bishop Toop's home chapel, where he will continue to remember all of those intentions in his prayers. We ask this for you to do the same. Catholic community in solidarity, always doing what Jesus tells us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. To build up our community, we just sang so beautifully. The Lord wants us to build up the kingdom of God, to help our brothers and sisters, and to draw closer to Him, to be in deep relationship with the God who loves us. I'm so happy to celebrate this Intentions Mass with all of you and for all of you and the Intentions. I'm very grateful to have Bishop Curtis Guillory with us, who only three weeks ago, which seems like three years ago at this point, for me at least, handed over the reins. So Bishop Guillory, welcome home. And to all who are with us via live stream, this cathedral is only about mm, one-sixth full, and I know this Mass would normally be about 120% full for this Mass under normal circumstances. So for those able to be with us and represent your parishes and the great works that through God you have done this year, I thank you for your presence and for what you do for our diocese and for those joining us, we pray today for God's grace upon our lives, upon our homes, upon our communities. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal contrite hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oremos. Inflama, Señor, nuestros corazones con el espíritu de amor para que podamos pensar siempre lo que es digno y agradable a tus ojos y amarte sinceramente en los hermanos. Por nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo y es Dios, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. If one of your kindred is in need in any community in the land, which is the Lord our God, is giving you, you shall not harden your heart nor close your hand against your kin who is in need. Instead, you shall freely open your hand and generously lend what suffices to meet that need. Be careful not to entertain the mean thought. The seventh year, the year of remission, is near, so that you would begrudge your kin who is in need and give nothing. And your kin would cry to the Lord against you, and you would be held guilty. When you give, give generously, and not with a stingy heart. For that, the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and undertaking. The land will never lack for needy persons. That is why I command you, open your hand freely to your poor and to your needy kin in the land. 
the word of the Lord. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro El fin de todas las cosas está cercano Sed pues sensatos y sobrios para daros a la oración Ante todo, tened entre vosotros intenso amor Pues el amor cubre multitud de pecados Sed hospitalarios unos con otros sin murmurar. Que cada cual ponga al servicio de los demás la gracia que ha recibido. Como buenos administradores de las diversas gracias de Dios. Si alguno habla, sean palabras de Dios. Si alguno presta un servicio... Hágalo en virtud del poder recibido de Dios, para que Dios sea glorificado en todo por Jesucristo, a quien corresponde en la gloria y el poder por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Palabra de Dios.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it had come from, although the servers who had drawn drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana and Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. After this, he and his mother, brothers, and his disciples went down to Capernaum and stayed there only a few days. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in three short weeks, the Lord threw me into the deep end of the Natchez River. (laughs) Bishop Guillory told me many times how generous our people, our priests, our deacons, our religious are. And in three weeks, I got to see that faith put into action. These readings tonight speak to us so beautifully. When you give, give generously and not with a stingy heart. Don't you love the way the Lord uses that word stingy? Straight from the Old Testament. Don't give with a stingy heart. Open your hand freely to the poor 
and to your needy kin in your land. Even in these three weeks, I have seen that so beautifully and evidently lived out as we reach out to our brothers and sisters on the eastern side of our diocese, from Orange to Newton, as we've reached across the Sabine River to our kin, to help all throughout the Diocese of Lake Charles, to see this up close and personal, to have gotten to know so many of our faithful, as I had such a quick early tour of the diocese, to get to know so beautifully our priests and our deacons. St. Peter says, your love for one another must be intense. And already I'm seeing that love, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this diocese and to enter into the intensity of what it is to be the bishop of this great family. Our gospel tonight, the second chapter of St. John. I want to focus on three phrases to hold them up for us. On the third day, they have no more wine. Do whatever he tells you. St. John is a master theologian. The symbol and the image of his gospel is the eagle because it soars. So John didn't waste any words. The Lord using him as the instrument of this gospel. On the third day. Does that ring a bell to any of us as Catholic Christians? It probably should. Because on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. The new creation began on the third day. Jesus performs his first miracle on the third day. This is the mark of a new beginning. Even here in our diocese in this time of transition, as the sixth bishop of our diocese, building on 20 years of my predecessor, and his predecessors, building on the faith of our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. This marks a new beginning, a new beginning in what God has called me to, a new beginning of relationships with the faithful of Southeast Texas, and a new beginning always is a moment of excitement. And the Lord invites us into new relationship. And I'm so grateful to meet all of you tonight. And I've already visited six of our parishes for visitations, and I'm so enjoying getting to know the beautiful stewardship of the Diocese of Beaumont. So Jesus, on the third day, his first miracle is about to reveal his glory, a new beginning. The next two are Mary's words, our Blessed Mother, whose birthday we celebrated this week. They have no more wine. For me, those simple words 
are the model of all intercession. This is our Mass for intercession. Mary models for us these intentions that we bring before the Lord today. And what I love about this is Mary doesn't tell Jesus what to do, how to do it, what the time frame is. She doesn't say, hey, call over those waiters, get some big jugs of water, tell them immediately to bring them over to the head waiter. Jesus, lay your hands on them. What does she say? They have no more wine. I think so often we spend too much time telling God exactly what and how and when to do it. When Mary models for us this total surrender, she didn't know what Jesus was going to do, but she knew he would do something. They have no more wine. She simply revealed in her poverty her need. It wasn't even her need. It was the need of that young couple whose wedding it was. Jesus, my children have no more faith. Jesus, our land is sick. Jesus, there is too much sin and division in the world. That is a model of an intention for us. They have no more wine. For me, this has been a beautiful turning point spiritually, reflecting on those simple words of surrender, which leads to Mary's trust. Do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. Mary's whole role as our intercessor, as our mother, is to always lead us to her divine son. Do whatever he tells you. I don't know what he's going to tell you to do. He's always coming up with some crazy idea. But whatever he says, just do it. And he told him to do something crazy. We sometimes have to do crazy things for Jesus to make miracles work through them. St. Paul tells us to be fools for Christ. Pope Francis encourages us sometimes to spread the gospel. It's going to get messy. Get into the mud. Get dirty. Make mistakes. Do whatever he tells you. Can you imagine what those waiters were thinking? They used those ceremonial washing jars filled with water to wash hands and feet. And we're not talking about nice, clean COVID-19 hands. We're talking about dirty, first century, caked on people that didn't have shoes and socks, feet and hands. Yuck! Take those jars and take it to the head waiter. In other words, take it to your boss. Take it to the guy that pays you. Scoop some out and give him something to drink. And they're like, oh man, this is going to be good. And we are probably going to get fired. Oh, you have saved the best wine for last. Jesus performs his first miracle, transforming water 
into wine. At the Last Supper, Jesus performs his last miracle before his resurrection, transforming wine into his precious blood. Jesus is crazy in love with us. Let us bring our intentions to him tonight. This basket which represents all of the prayers of Southeast Texas. And just as he could transform water into wine and wine into his very precious blood, he can transform these intentions into the miracles we so desire. And so we come to him tonight in our poverty, in our surrender. We have no more wine. And like Mary, we trust. And we trust that we will do whatever he tells us. And so tonight we, as we do at every Mass, we present our prayers, the prayers of the faithful, the intentions of our hearts before the throne of our loving God. For Francis, our Pope, David, our bishop, priests, deacons, and religious who prepare God's people to dine at the banquet of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the divisive and immoral practice of racism in our fractured country, for those who courageously denounce injustices for peace in our world, and for the strength to live our baptismal call to promote the just and loving ways of our Creator. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of those suffering physically, emotionally, or spiritually, for healing of families or relationships, for peace of body, mind, and spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with financial worries, employment concerns, the effects of past storms, the everyday challenges of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those missing in our worshiping communities, and in the celebration of the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been devastated by the raging and intense fires in California and Oregon, for their healing and hope and trust in God, and for their eventual recovery of life's necessities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffered so deeply during Hurricane Laura, for the many good Samaritans who are still helping those affected by the storm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual well-being and the safety of our children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of a happy death 
and for the peaceful rest of the souls of our departed loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear us, your children, as we cry out to you with confidence and trust. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Santifica, Señor, por tu piedad estos dones, y al recibir en oblación este sacrificio espiritual, concédenos que podamos extender a todos tu amor. Por Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out the grace of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, on those you have replenished with the one bread of heaven, and refresh us, we pray, with the delights of perfect charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would be seated for just a moment. Bishop, do I put this on now while I make announcements, or do I wait? Is it kind of open? Well, I got to learn how to do all this, so on, on or off, what do you think? Okay. Bishop says he leaves it off. I'll follow suit. I just want to recognize a couple of people because all of us here are great stewards of this diocese. I ask us to remember in a particular way tonight, Don Watt. Don Watt was the first recipient of the Monsignor Richard DiStefano Faithful Stewardship Award in 2004 when we first started that award. He passed away last Saturday and his funeral mass and burial were today at Our Lady of the Pines in Woodville. He and his wife of 65 years were the first in a long line of faithful stewards. And so I think it's beautiful as we honor our BFA and at this Intentions Mass that we remember the repose of the soul of Don and, and think of all of our bishops, of our priests, of our deacons, of the women religious, of our parents, of our grandparents who have died, who gave their lives to build up this local church. It's extraordinary. May we remember them. May we never forget them. May we never be ungrateful for the foundations upon which we build. Our diocesan chairs for this year's BFA, Roberta and Forrest Overstreet, so grateful for your goodness, your kindness, your generosity. Our diocesan priest chair, Father Kevin Bado. Father Kevin, we thank you for your service. Our honorary chairs, Teresa and Joe Herring from St. Anne's, thank you for your service. And our new participation chairs, Stephanie and Cody Richings. And to all of our parish BFA coordinators, you've done so much in such a challenging time. Please, God, we've got to get through COVID, and we will. As we tell and cry out to the Lord, we have no more wine. We have no more health on this earth. And so, Lord, you transform our situation, our recovery from hurricanes, our brothers and sisters with fires, so many needs in our world, and so many suffering spiritually, emotionally, financially, physically in these days. Those intentions, the intentions of our hearts, we continue to lift up to the Lord. Please stand. Now we the Lord be with you. And with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Master Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.